Following 14 days of testimony, the jury de delivered that guilty verdict after only about 10 hours of deliberation. We've shown your reaction from people across the country and including right here in the district as well. Joining me right now for insight into everything that led up to this verdict and what we can expect moving forward is Glenn Ivey there, former state's attorney for Prince George's County and former federal prosecutor, along with Rashawn Ray, a fellow at the Brookings Institution. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with us. We are short on time, so let's get right to it. Uh, Rashawn, I want to start with you. You heard the president there talking about uh, the need for action right now. Uh, how much do you think this uh, this verdict, this guilty verdict against Derek Chauvin plays into what uh, Congress can do right now? Honestly, I'm not sure how much. And Lorenzo, it's always great to be on with you. You know, I think part of what people have to realize is that the Derek Chauvin trial is about an individual in a court of law. And what people are asking for are policy changes at the federal and state level. We know that the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act has galvanized people. That passed the House. It has not yet even came up for a vote in the Senate. In the Senate, We just heard President Biden talking about his Department of Justice selections that still have not been confirmed. I think that that will be a big change because it will lead to a slew probably of investigations in departments and consent decrees that were left on the desk during the Trump administration. So look, this case, was supposed to be a slam dunk. That's what it was. Everyone saw the ball go in the net. But what people were wondering when they looked at the scoreboard is whether or not the score would count and change. And that's happened, but it's just one case. While this was happening, we saw what happened to Dante Wright during the trial. People should look at the sentencing and people should look at these other cases as well. Yeah, and speaking of sentencing, Glenn, I want to talk to you about that. We know that he was found guilty on three charges, second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Uh, really three different charges for a singular act. Why those three charges and what difference will it make when it comes down to sentencing about eight weeks from now? Well, they'll, they'll probably merge together, uh, but you know what what will be most important, I think, is the second degree murder conviction. It carries up to 40 years in jail. I don't think he's going to get that much uh, jail time for sure, but I do think that he um, is likely to get a substantial sentence. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have sentencing guidelines and, and uh, you know, comparisons with other sentences that are similar that will help to guide the judge who get a report done uh, that will give him some background on Derek Chauvin. But I think really this is one of those moments where the world will be watching to make sure that from an accountability standpoint, there's this type of stiff sentence that really sends a right yeah. message, not only to Derek Chauvin, but to other police officers and all of us around the country. Right. All right, Glenn Ivey, Rashawn Ray. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here with us and for the last couple of weeks as well.